Greetings, hobby fans. My name's Marcel, and I'm going to turn that hater off. Sci-fi Sci war gamers. In this video, we're going to follow a very, very early painting guide. Greetings, hobby fans. My name's Marcel, and it's my mission to help you explore the hobby. So recently, I found a painting guide in this old White Dwarf magazine, issue 99, from March 1988. And inside, there is a painting guide teaching you how to paint miniatures. In the article, they paint a dwarf, so I thought it would make sense to try and acquire the exact same miniature as they use, which I managed to do. Anyway, let's jump in and see how I got on. As promised, we're giving you a step-by-step -step guide to painting a typical miniature to show you the kind of results almost anybody can achieve. The famous, or is that notorious, Games Workshop look. If you have never attempted miniature painting before and you follow this guide, we think you'll be pleasantly surprised by your own efforts. On the other hand, if you have been following recent heavy metals but have nevertheless experienced problems when trying to apply the techniques described, here is the ideal opportunity to pinpoint where you're going wrong and see the error of your ways you can apply the following treatment to any figure you like. We chose this dwarf because it provided the opportunity to show you a variety of textures. Metal, hair, flesh and cloth. So give this guide a try and don't be afraid to start again if you feel unhappy with the results. You need to build up experience to fully understand why the techniques work the way they do. Once you get the knack, you won't want to stop. You could even leave some of the later stages cut out until you're more familiar with the basics. You may even decide to experiment with a couple of the stages on older figures, dry brushing and face painting for example. This provides a good way of honing your skills. From the letters that arrive in the Blanchitsu pigeonhole, many of you seem to want to paint to the standard you see in White Dwarf the minute you start collecting. But even the most talented figure painters have to train themselves first, so don't be put off. Patience and perseverance will yield astonishing results sooner than you might think. You will need two small brushes and one larger older brush your Citadel paints, a tube of superglue, a modelling knife, a jar of water, an old rag, although I don't know what this is for, a palette and some matte or gloss varnish. Wherever you decide to construct and paint your miniature, make sure it's not on an unprotected piece of good furniture, such as a dining room table. The last thing we want to see is a claim from a distraught mother, wife or husband invoicing us for a new table. Right then, off we go. Clean the figure up with a sharp modelling knife. Blunt blades are dangerous. Pay particular attention to small bits of flash and mould lines. The quality of Citadel miniatures is such that this process is minimal. The dwarf used here was chosen randomly from stock and only the helmet showed a thin mould line. Drawing the blade firmly over the line smooths the surface quickly and easily. The sword edges can be shaved down to give a clean sharp line as well. This isn't actually necessary, there was no fault in the casting. But blades have to be made fairly thick to accommodate the casting process. Shaving the blade makes it look that little bit more authentic. Next, cut out the slot on the rear of the plastic base. In my case, I didn't actually have a slot, so the figure faces directly to the front. It makes for a better position if the figure is going to be part of a regiment, but the choice is yours. Leave the shield for now. 
We'll come back to that later. Fits the figure into the slot, then holding the miniature upside down, squeeze a little super glue into the underside of the slot. Or in my case, glue the miniature's feet to the base. Lay the figure down for 10 minutes or stand it up while the glue dries. Don't leave the thing standing upright or you may find the figure gets stuck to your work surface. In my case, this isn't an issue because there's no slot for the glue to drip down. There are a variety of ways to undercoat a figure. The simplest method is to use a diluted mixture of Citadel White. It doesn't want to be so thick that it obliterates any detail and it shouldn't be so thin that the paint shrinks on the surface of the model or fails to provide a clear white surface. Remember that white makes the figure cleaner and brighter looking and provides a good surface to actually paint on. Enamel white or black undercoats provide alternatives but they will invariably make your task more difficult. Just take our word for it for now. Acrylic white is the way to go and I didn't have any Citadel white so I used Vallejo model colour white. Make sure that the paint is applied evenly across the whole of the figure. Blobs or puddles of paint should be avoided at all costs. If extra paint does build up on the model, use an old brush to clean it up before the coat has a chance to dry. Now for some fun. Slowly and carefully apply base colours. A thin wash, paint diluted a little with water of black to the male, sword and helmet. Allow this to dry. Next, using a flesh paint, paint the flesh on the hands and the face next. Then, using a mixture of orange and yellow or spear staff brown to the boots, in which case I didn't have this colour, so I used Vallejo model colour khaki, and add this brown to the boots. These will end up tan brown. Now, paint the tunic orange. I myself have used Vallejo model colour orange red. This is in fact going to end up red, allegedly. Don't be concerned if the orange is a little thin. Now we have the largest areas of the figure covered, it's time for a little shading and highlighting. First, using Vallejo model colour chrome, we're going to give the black metal areas a burnished steel effect. Load a small quantity of silver paint onto the tip of the old brush tip. Gently rub most of this off against the rag, then quickly draw the bristles across the black paint so that some of the remaining silver paint adheres to the area. Gradually repeat this process until you have the desired effect. You will notice that some of the black remains. Dot in the helmet rivets with silver. If you have been wondering what dry brushing is all about, then that was it. Now mix some red paint with water so the solution is quite thin. Using the good brush, Cover the tunic with this mix. Be careful not to let the paint flow onto any other areas you have already painted. Notice how the thin paint settles in the folds and recesses, and the orange paint shows through on the raised areas, creating a highlight. Some of you may want to leave the tunic as it is at this stage. Make a similar wash of bestial brown if it hasn't dried up after 20 years and paint this over the boots and the flesh areas. Right, now let's put some colour onto the hair and the beard. Apply a base colour of spear staff brown or Vallejo model khaki in my case as I don't have this 30 year old colour paint. The sword handle and pommel are painted gold. In this case, I've used Citadel Retributor armor. A mix of red and bestial brown is applied as a wash over the hair and beard and to the belt and pouch. So far, so good. It's starting to look a bit of a mess though, isn't it? This is the stage that seems to be putting some of you off. You get all this way 
following the guidelines and your figure still looks tatty. But don't worry, this is a stage that all figures go through. So let's start clearing it up. Take your smaller brush and load it with your flesh paint. Paint the raised areas of flesh again, but leave the gaps between the fingers, the recesses underneath and on each side of the nose, the eye sockets and the edge of the face. Next, with Spear Staff Brown or Vallejo Model Khaki, do the same to the beard, hair, pelt, pouch and boots. But this time, use a careful combination of painting and dry brushing. Painting follows the lines of the model, where dry brushing runs across it. Now, by adding a little white to these colours, you can carefully paint in highlights on the top part of the belt, the boot toe caps and the face. The nose can be finished off with an extra fine line of white. The mix of white and Spear Staff Brown or Vallejo Model Khaki can be used to highlight the hair and beard. Drawing the brush lightly across the flow of the hair sideways. Now, to bring out the raised folds on the tunic, use a tiny amount of orange and khaki brown mix to touch up the highest areas. Notice that white isn't used to highlight the tunic. This would only make the thing look pink, which isn't the effect we want. This is painted carefully. It isn't blended as such, but as the colours graduate upwards towards the final highlight, it looks blended anyway. Note that these smooth areas are not dry brushed. Dry brushing is quick and effective if you're painting the figure as part of a war games army, but more subtle use of the brush results in a cleaner figure. Save dry brushing for when you want to paint a textured surface. Next, using your silver paint, add a little silver to the belt buckle. Then, Use a mix of black and bestial brown to shadow the eye sockets. Very carefully, using white, add the whites of the eyes. Use the angled tip of the fine brush to make the eye shape. See the diagram. If you're right-handed, the right eye can be painted fairly easily. Turn the figure upside down to paint the left one or reverse the process if you're left-handed. By the way, always hold the figure by the base, picking it up gently by the sword, or in my case, use a Citadel miniature painting holder. Adding the pupils is tricky, but with a little patience, a steady hand, and some thinned black paint, anybody can do it. Just use the very tip of the brush, slightly angled, see the diagram. If you slip, it won't take too long to retouch the area and try again. Anyway, practice makes perfect. Mix some red paint and some black paint to produce a very ready brown, but not too thick, and line all the edges. Line the helmet rim against the hair and face, under the nose, the edge of the beard, the bottom of the tunic, the arm edges, the belt edge, the buckle edge, the sword handle and hilt joint to sword, the pouch, the mail sleeve edge, and the shield boss. Now, while holding the figure by the sword, paint the base black. It looks good now, doesn't it? Let's take a look now at the shield. Push the shield onto a matchstick if you have one, so that you can hold it. Paint the back and the rim of the shield black, and then the center white. What about the pattern then? Well, you could use transfers, or a pictorial design would look pretty spectacular. 
However, as this video is about minimal expenditure, time and expertise, the best answer is a geometric pattern painted in a colour which contrasts with the rest of the figure. Being unashamedly derivative, the pattern you see here is stolen from the Bayou Tapestry. It looks just suitable for a dwarf. It's painted in green with a small mix of green and white for the highlights. Dry brush the black rim with silver paint. Always make sure to pick out your rivets around the edge. However, I was lucky and my dry brushing took care of this for me. Now, attach the shield to the boss and pick out the boss in silver. Using a matchstick, coat the base with super glue and sprinkle sand, flock or soil over the top flock was used in this figure and I have to admit I wish I hadn't. Leave it to dry. Then make a green wash and flood the top of the base. Again, leave it to dry before randomly highlighting it with Vallejo model khaki for some reason. I have no idea why they asked me to do this, it just looks a mess. When it's all dry, varnish to taste. In my taste, I have it. Tada! Finito. Celebrations all around. Feast and merriment, jump up and down a lot, invested time, a couple of hours, and the use of a hairdryer to persuade the paint to dry more quickly. Isn't the result worth it? Well, I think that turned out an absolute mess. <laughs> I don't know about you. The black lining there looked absolutely atrocious. And there were some really, really strange steps in there, such as dry brushing after you've finished most of your base coats. I thought we'd be dry brushing those metals as soon as we were able to, but no, we were gonna paint some hair and other colors first and then dry brush and try and be tidy with it. Let's just say I don't think I'll be using this method of painting again. I will admit there are some things in there I do like and some things in there which we still do today. Half of it is just the order of things and my black lining was very very thick. I think it probably does look good if you make it nice and thin but then again we can just do that with um, base coats and highlighting and get that nice black outline there. I might try it. I might try it the other way around and see how I get on. I want to know if you guys thought this painting method was any good. Would you use it in future? Have you used it in the past? What was your favourite bit about this painting method? What are your views on black lining? Dry brushing, do you do it at the start or do you do it at the end? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy the content on this channel, then please consider joining my Patreon page, the link to which is in the description below. And if you do, I will love you forever. If you want to see some more painting tutorials, and I know you do, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That means you, Nicola. As always, thank you very much for watching and always remember to blackline your models.